Some of you know I'm a collector of comic strips. And um, I've got an old one, Charlie Brown, with Lucy at her booth. You know, the one psychiatrist is in is over the top of it. And Charlie Brown walks in, takes a seat, and he says, I have given up. Lucy says, what? What have you given up? Charlie Brown says, I've given up running away from all my troubles. Well, why, asks Lucy. Charlie Brown, there's no use running away from all my troubles because everywhere I go, I take myself with me. The people of Israel probably resonated with that particular comic strip, if it were old enough. Like Charlie Brown, they could not escape troubles because often the case, they were the cause of their troubles. And everywhere they went, it seemed troubles followed them. It started with Adam. You know how that one starts out in the garden where everything is perfect. One of the best of all situations, a garden spark spot really and there was only one thing one thing that God said just don't do this this is off limits that tree stay away and you know how that works out (laughs) and when things start going bad they just keep going downhill you know remember Noah where God says I think i got to start this all over and try it. It's not working. And then later they find themselves in Egypt in slavery. And so he sends Moses to rescue them. And that doesn't quite work out so well because once he rescues them, they come to Mount Sinai. Moses climbs the top of the mountain, gets the Ten Commandments. And before he can even make it to the bottom, uh, before the tablets have cooled off even, the rebellious people of Israel are already making the golden calf, right? Time after time after time, they have to keep starting over because they can't seem to get it right. God keeps saying, you will be my people, I will be your God, and then they go off on their own way. Into the promised land, it's the same routine until the point at which finally They are sent off into exile all over the world, especially into Babylon and into Assyria, and the temple itself is destroyed. And that's where Jeremiah steps up, and you start to hear today's lesson from Jeremiah the prophet. He says, you are incapable of keeping covenant. Every time you go off and do your own thing, God has to try to reclaim you somehow because you don't seem to remember what God wants you to do. And the Jewish people listening to that, the people of Israel probably were thinking, well, is this the end? The temple's gone. There will be no hope, no reclamation again. Is God done with us a final time? And Jeremiah says, You might have given up on God, but God will not give up on you. He is the one whose promises are always being upheld. And behold, the days are coming, says the Lord to you through me. I plan to make a new covenant. Not like the one we made in Egypt, because that didn't work, which you broke. I want to make a new covenant, a new try. And I'm going to start out by forgetting all that has gone on in the past. Today is a new day. And the term that he uses in Hebrew is a legal term where he says, I will forget the past. He says, I am going to drop my case against you once and for all. It's done. It's truly a new beginning. I will forgive their sin says God, I will remember it no more. I got in trouble for uh, a, a sermon illustration I used on that verse in seminary because uh, I said the, the punchline of the story is that God forgot. And, uh, and my homiletics teacher gave me a C for the sermon because she said, nowhere does it say God forgets anything. And I was smart enough not to correct her. (laughs) 
But Jeremiah says, God's promise is, I will forget everything, everything that you have done up to now. It's in the past. I drop my case against you. But then the problem, of course, is, well, what about tomorrow? Because <laughs> he keeps doing that, and we keep doing the same thing again. So what will be the solution? Yeah, the past is behind us, but what about tomorrow? In the Old Testament, one theologian says, there's an excess of promise, but not sufficient power. And that's why the people of Israel keep getting themselves into trouble. God promises, and then they don't have the power that is necessary to make it work. But here, God says, I know it's not easy. I know why it is that you keep getting into trouble. And here is where the best part of Jeremiah's word is. I am going to do a brand new thing. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. So that no matter what, even if they forget what was on the tablets, even if they forget what all the prophets say, it will be right here. And you cannot ever lose that because it is now part of who you are. And that will give you a chance to finally make your way. The language is not of a boss or a master, but rather a disappointed parent who wants to give some way that that parent's children can learn how to live right. God doesn't want abandonment. He doesn't want to walk away. God doesn't want to be estranged. God wants relationship. And God knows our hearts are fickle. And so this new way is a whole new game. You might think about us having the heart of a cat. A cat seems to care less about what we want, doesn't it? A cat always has their own mind, right? Especially if you try to force a cat to do anything. It never works. And God says, I have tried the rules. I have tried the consequences. No matter what it is, you have the heart of a cat. He actually says you have the heart of stone, but imagine cat for a second. You know the only way a cat will actually do what you want is when the cat knows that you are doing what the cat wants <laughs> and what the cat needs. When the cat will feel most loving and affectionate, is when it feels relationship. That's when it will come and curl up against you and purr. God says, I want to try relationship like a heart of a cat. I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. God's promise is coming. The day is coming, says the Lord, when we will need a heart transplant, just like maybe our cat. Walter Brueggemann says that when that heart transplant comes that Jeremiah talks about, it is not making us into robots. What it is doing is actually giving us the heart that God intended for us to have within us from the very beginning. And that heart that knows the affection of the other heart of God. And that in that affection, we start to transform the way we live and behave because now we really do believe and it's now a transformed heart that can obey that God wants us to be in loving relationship and therefore we learn over time how to love God and how to love each other. That's what the transplant is all about. God's way becomes the way we have at our core. And we become more truly who God intended us to be when we were created. Lent is a time for exploring what that means. It's time for our cardiologist visit. My cardiologist canceled on me this week. <laughs> and so, you know, 
He must have thought that I didn't need another checkup. I don't know. But God is continually working on our heart transplants to make sure that they're operating well, given the Holy Spirit who now dwells within us, to make our heart new. The old heart was narcissistic. I put myself first. But with the new heart, I now put God and our neighbors as central to what I care about. And therefore, my behavior changes because my heart has been changed. God becomes internalized. And I now always can know God and know God's way because of that work of developing a new heart. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was teaching a confirmation class early on in his career. And uh, he said, I was teaching the story of how God's love always gave us second chances, third chances, fourth chances, and just kept going. Seven times 70, I taught my class. And it was leading up to Jeremiah giving us a new heart and to Jesus. And I asked the class, what's really going on with this? And a kid in the class said, Tutu, better than any seminary or theologian, Here's what, the, here's what the student in the class said. God said to me, look, I saved your butts. So now, go out and behave. God's message from Jeremiah. Because I love you, I've saved your butts. Now let's fall back in love. Amen. Amen.